sock it to me. Uh, what? I said sock it to me. Why? I don't know. I have no idea. It just came into my head. Okay. I don't know. We should insert the clip of Nixon saying sock it to me right here. Anyway, it's Friday. Yep. We spent some time this afternoon reading about notable tire fires. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them. You'd be yep. surprised. But they started in the 80s, or at least record keeping of them started in the 80s. There's some tire fire that's been completely buried, and it's still burning like 20 years later, according to Wikipedia. Wow. Yeah, I know, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't it something? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, uh, it's a lovely, slightly chilly, decently sunny, breezy, early spring day here. It's actually, it's quite pretty. So, um, I don't know, I'm digging it. All the trees are in bloom. Full bloom. This is like the only time when we have color. <laughs> it's in the our only landscape. <laughs> yeah, it's the only time that anything is alive in Colorado. The rest of the year, everything is dead. Mm -hmm. Everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. Even your soul. <laughs> sure, why not? I don't okay. know. Hey, that's a really cool snake. Did you do that? Yeah. Oh, that's really awesome. Thank you. I really like that. She doodled a snake. Anywho. Oh, let's do this thing. Oh, wait. First, we should do wrist check. Oh, wrist check. Which we've done. Oh, I, swear. I swear. We've done our wrist check. <laughs> okay. Well, sorry, everybody, but I... Well, I guess I haven't worn it in no, a... No, you haven't worn that one in a while. Really? Okay, then I'm not apologizing. <laughs> there you go. Maybe. Sort of. There it is. So, that's, uh, that's your Alba. This is a JDM... I, some people call it the robot. This is really cool. It's solid brace. I'm so happy that you like it. Mm -hmm. I really am. I'm just delighted that you dig it because it's a really cool watch. And it's got actually kind of a asymmetric side, asymmetric bullhead thing to it. Mm -hmm. Like they actually got the whole, the whole bullhead deal where it's thicker here and thinner here. It's cool. I'm glad you like it. Mm -hmm. And I am wearing uh, my 6105-8119. This is mine that I call uh, A New Hope, or I just think of it as A-N-H, because somebody hand-inscribed that on the back, and they, they did a job to make sure it was perfectly eligible. So this is A New Hope. Um, the case back has traveled from watch build to watch build. And so I've always had the case back, but I built different watches on it. But the watch, once it got the A New Hope case back, became A New Hope. This watch, I bought it on eBay, but it didn't have that 6105 back. It had another back from another model. So I have the 6105 A New Hope, and it landed here where it was finally needed for real. And there it is. This is A New Hope. Named it for my son. Okay, cool. What's up, Frogamus? Oh, I'm sorry, the dog is here. <laughs> <gasps> diggy diggy oh gosh he's so warm on my cold hand yeah yes oh mm -hmm. it feels so nice okay let's do this thing uh for pd seiko 6139 6002 march 71 restoration part one um paul dame thanks spencer this was an ebay find back in 2021 the seller is out of south carolina as best I can recall from the listing, this was an estate piece. I took a chance based on what I could see of the loom and the dial hands under the scuffed up crystal. You are teaching people things. No, I'm just pointing out stuff that's obvious. Well, no, I know, but I mean, speaking as not you, when, uh, the first thing it's like, oh God, this watch is totally trashed when the, um, the crystal is all messed up. So yeah, it, you're teaching people to look beyond the crystal. Yeah, first impression of that watch is that it's kind of, that it was, you know, rougher than it really was because uh, the case had some more wear on it. I, the guy was, had it like around scratchy stuff and the, and the crystal was really hacked up. But yeah, you look through the dial and uh, you look through the dial and you see the hands and the color and the, and the, and the white loom and you know what you got. It's a nice watch. It's We're a nice watch. We're both scratching the dog. We are. <laughs> So Who's happy. a good boy? Who's a good boy? Uh, from Super Cruise. Uh, Spencer with the black indicator rings. I have had good luck using a Minwax black mineral spirits based stain pen 
uh, you can get at the hardware store, shake well and coat the ring several times, allowing it to set for three to five minutes before going back with a clean Q-tip and wiping the excess stain away. You can clean up the pip loom with either lighter fluid or reloom the pip altogether. The ring will not be NOS black, but much darker in color than the chalky white these tend to exhibit with excessive fade. You will get something that looks like dark slate gray in color painting on the ring is unaffected but the stain yeah. i think it's so cool that you people that do this stuff are like finding things that aren't specific for fixing the thing and figuring it out that's so cool oh yeah like um i <clears throat> i've recommended a product before called tarnex uh it's for polishing silver and stuff like that you know you'd sit around on sundays you know and polish silver as one does and um, but it, it works great on all kinds of stuff. You have to be really careful with it in any kind of watch work because it'll tend to go after plating. But it, it does for certain uses. It's amazing and off-label uses. Holy cow! Okay. Uh, I remember the first thing that you found for um, watches that you got from the hardware store was Brasso. Oh yeah, Brasso, man, Brasso. I still use, somebody actually stole my bottle of Brasso. I, I think I brought it upstairs to shine the yeah, red box and I thought I brought it back. I don't know where it is, but I've been looking for it. The reason being is that one of the first things I do with the case, when I take a watch case apart and it's got, especially, you know, it's pretty grody, um, you will find the Brasso works beautifully and unlike say something like Tarnex which can um, which can basically discolor stainless steel if you're not real careful Brasso is much it, it works perfectly with stainless steel and you'd just be amazed you clean a case with Brasso carefully it's just yeah you wash it with warm soapy water and then you, you, you dry it off and you get the Brasso in a Q-tip and just br slop Brasso all over it they're so bright when they come out because even though stainless steel is stainless, it still will haze up a little. I could have sworn I put it back. I'm sorry, I had it a mm. while ago. No, I know, it's just one of my usual practices and I have ways to get around it. You should have just asked me. I don't know, it's one of the things, I'll, I'll figure that I'll, I'll go back to my regular using protocol when I find it, wherever it might be. Um, okay, mail call. Why does it say mall call? Uh, it said mall call last week too. Why? I don't, but it's called a typo. But why do you do it every week? No, I just copied the heading over. <laughs> I just, all, all I did was... How I, many mall calls has there been? This is two, oh. I think, number two. <laughs> okay. From Sidewalk Astronomy Netherlands. Good morning, happy Saturday, and it is Japanese. Um, Gojira with an RRR, actually. Gojira? Ujira? Ujira? I, can't, I can't do that. <laughs> I, I didn't know the Japanese used a rolled R. Uh -huh. Yeah, the bomb caused the creation of that story. Uh, go <laughs> Just say Godzilla. Godzilla <laughs> would make a nice name for a watch. Star Trek, yeah, our TV died, so I don't watch it anymore. I want to see the expanse, all of it. I bought the books, finally, a classic sci-fi books film again, sound science and all. I guess I have to buy the DVD or something. I hear so many good things about The Expanse. Uh, they say usual stuff. It's a little slow to get going, but they talk a lot about uh, the, how they do their zero-g physics to make them look right and, and like correct uh, depiction of how combat in space would occur. They, people say it's great. That's not my vibe right now, man. Yeah, I don't really feel like it's like a couple hundred years in the future. I don't feel like dealing with any kind of dystopian. I'm about no, to we're get watching, blown into space. We're watching 30 Rock again. <laughs> Though, Rick and Morty is finally on season six is available for streaming. On finally. HBO. On HBO. What? <laughs> Bruce Barlow, enjoy your pizza and great story about Dolly. On a clear night, you can see Dolly from down under. Yeah, I'd like to see Dolly from down under. He set me up on that one. I had to pick it up, man. He left that one wide open. Honestly, I'd be in a real kerfluffle 
I'd be in a real pickle. If Dolly did show up at the front door, I'd be like, you know, because I take my marriage vows really seriously, but, you know, Dolly, wow. I don't know what to do. Man, it would just be a problem. I think maybe we just all have to go out to brunch. <laughs> uh, Connor Whitworth. Uh, I couldn't keep my fave vintage Seiko movements down to five. Testament to the quality of Seiko movements of old. So a shout out to a couple of modern Seiko movements, the 8L35 and the 9F Quartz. Tremendous both. I've treated the 9F like a tool watch, Grand Seiko GMT, and has stood up to some abuse and not missed a beat. Would dearly love to see a Grand Seiko fit the 9F to some kind of field watch design. Dress watches aside, they need to take a further advantage of their 9F. Yeah, I still, I, I still going back and forth on how people feel about quartz watches these days, like high-end quartz watches. So uh, that'd be that'd be interesting. But you know, if they were going to go high-end, I mean, they could do another new new tuna reissue that instead of using the seven C, go with the nine F. Wouldn't that be something? Actually, that'd be pretty cool, especially if you make it a a perpetual calendar, just like you're a perpetual doggy. Yes, you are. You're a perpetual doggy. Really? <laughs> I got your ears. Oh, I got your ears. Ears, ears, ears. You got itchy ears. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry about that, folks. We forgot. Uh, True Blue Miata. Uh, hi, guys. Couple of things. In the 8346 video, you said that they can't be force wound. What does that mean? Uh, it's when you go to the screw that's on top of the mainspring, on top of the barrel, and you, you literally force, turn it, you, you wind power into it rather than using the crown to wind it or letting the automatic system wind it. Uh, as far as a 6138-6139 reissue, I think the limiting factor is the movement. As far as I know, the only... What are you doing? I'm trying to tease the dog. Uh... <laughs> Uh, you made me lose my spot. Oh, as far as I know, the only mechanical chrono movement they have now is the NE88, but it has problems. It's tall, doesn't have a day wheel, and the winding stem and subdials are not in the same places. It's nice to dream, though. I've had the same thought about the Japanese market avoiding loom due to the fear of radioactivity. I agree it's plausible. Have you ever tried Starburst jelly beans? <laughs> They're tasty, both tangy and sweet. Yes. Uh, I, yes. You see, I like old person candy, so it's got to be the tried and true. It's got to be the Brock's. It, it, it just, it has to be. If it's not the old timey candy, candy, then... Oh, really? So I put a... Can you, re can you remind me the first part of what he was talking about? Oh, he's oh, talking about the... Oh, you answered that. <clears throat> I stopped about the force wound thing. No, there was something after the... Oh, game. then the 6138, 6139 uh, reissues. They oh. could do it economies of scale economies of scale if they if they said if they said everyone can just go kick a rock and they started cranking out 6138s and 6139s economies of scale you make enough they're not going to cost that much they could also start selling them as an nh unbranded chronograph movement one or the other lord knows that other companies have seiko could start supplying 6138s and 6139s to the world and like 6138s would really be a thing it'd be great and it would also help us keep all of our lovely old ones running if they made them exactly correctly um because then they would have to start making the chronograph wheels again i think he just figured out the key to just constant pettings what having two adhd people have to sit still <laughs> they need to do something i know it's true in any case that would be great i wish they would um you know they're if they're having teething problems with that one that they've got oh god i thought you were talking about babies no 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 um well new baby 6138 that would be great. Boy, wouldn't that be a good seller? Um, but, I mean, the if they're having teething problems with the new chronograph, they kind of figured out all the problems with the 6100 series. Why don't they just go back to that and make it? They've already figured it out. They made millions of them. So, why not? Okay. All oh, right. We're still doing this. Uh, Wait, why are you drawing a snake? You you are not liking snakes. I'm, I'm letting you do your thing. Sorry. Okay, do your thing. 
Hi. That's the gentleman's uh, screen name. Hi, Sabrina and Spencer. I have a nice collection of vintage King Seiko's 56264499904502. My question is, could you swap a 5606 into a 5626? Like you, I have ADD and forgot about the forbidden hours of the 56K's movements. Question, oh wait. Oh, yes, question? yes you can. Oh. Externally, they're the same. But you just pop one in the other. Uh, okay. Hi. Question two, how do you tighten the minute hand on the 7000 to 7000? It runs very accurate, but if you set it, the minute hand slips. Keep up the good work, learn so much. You're so cool. I said you're cool. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Do you mean the, the minute hand and the minute hand wheel are slipping? Or do you mean the minute hand is slipping on the minute wheel? Um, if it's the if it's the latter, you you've got to, you've got to close up close up the, the hole some. Uh, it's usually not a super easy way to do that. It's usually something as crude as my very carefully because there's going to be a flange that comes up. Very carefully trying to move some of that in. I, I, a, a, I haven't yet come up with a way to do uh, uh, to compress in an oversized collar uh, without distorting the thing it's on. So I literally I just kind of move it in four or five points, ever so slightly, and that should be enough for it to grip. And if it isn't, do it a little more. Oh my God! Can you pause it? One moment. Okay. I had to get the thought out of my head, and you guys didn't need to know about it. Um, okay, from Saul Brook, Modern 6138, in that state of delusion, MSRP would be 5K, nothing for the common man, a modern 6139, 6, for the common man equals mecha quartz, which would be okay with me if they got everything else right, which they wouldn't. I don't know, man, I don't, the, the mecha quartz. What the frick is Mecha quartz, okay, so like a regular quartz watch, like a digital whatever, you push, you just push a button, and it just feels like you're doing something with a, a with a digital watch, so it has that sort of rubbery feeling. Mecha quartz is made specifically so that it goes click, that it feels like a mechanical chronograph, stop and start and reset. So you still have, you know, the main drive is going to be um, quartz, so it's going to drive from... With a mecha quartz, it's still driven the same way. It's driven backwards from a stepper motor, but I gather that they somehow just made it that all the mechanicals make clicky feelings. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, they could if they wanted to. Have you guys looked at the the Bulova Devil Divers, the one with the orange, that their reissues, Bulova reissues? It's not even Bulova. Bulova doesn't exist anymore, but they did a perfect job it's like one to one i swear to god it's a perfect recreation and i don't know i don't understand what i don't understand is why seiko they're making a conscious decision to not do this why it's just a simple you get like <clears throat> so emotional <laughs> well i just the problem is when, when i don't understand something and like there's there's no answer that I have that makes sense. I my I keep trying to flip the problem like it's a puzzle, uh, and and my so part of my brain is going eek, eek, and then I forget about it. But I have this like annoying like well you have to learn about the missing part. You and have so to learn acceptance. I just want to I all I want is an answer. There's a reason they don't do that. What is that reason? They'll get real close. They'll shoot all around it. They'll never bullseye it though. Why? Because they Why could. don't you write them a letter? Why would I write Seiko? Can someone write to Seiko, please, and say this crazy person on YouTube wants an answer? <laughs> it's like I'm going to have to find their mailing address, and then you write a letter, and then it gets all the way to Japan? Well, yeah. Oh, come on, that's so impersonal. I literally was going to send a letter. <laughs> if I wanted to do it, I'd send a letter. What? I want to be noticed, man. Wow. And here's a um, something random. 
that when I was in sixth grade, we had to pick a company to write to, um, to like say, we love your product and see if they would send something uh, because they, the Arizona Tea did it once. That's the only one I remember. And I wrote to Just Born, which is the Peeps. And I was like, I love Peeps. You guys should have them all year. And they were like, we do. And here's a giant box of candy. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I got tons of Mike and Ike's and, and <gasps> uh, hot tamales. Oh, my and, God. Yeah. Two of my favorites. I know. <laughs> Chewy candies are the best. And American Chewy candies, because I'm American. Though I have, have some overseas things going on there. But anyway. Man, American candies, especially you get the old Persian version, like the jelly beans, the real, the good old ones. That's the one you need. Or spice drops. Ugh. I like orange slices. <laughs> no, orange slices is really good. But oh, you get the Brock's little plastic crackly bags with the spice drops. Oh, I wish I had a bag right now. Um, red vines. I like Twizzlers. Red vines, man. Red vines are where it's at here in America for people who are not living here. I don't know if you're familiar with red vines. Uh, they're sort of a red licorice, sort of twisty rubbery thing. Uh, and they're also, they're a tube. So you can actually bite off both ends and then use them as a you straw. You do that with a Twizzler. Yeah, but Twizzlers are made of plastic. In no, any case. And, and friggin' red vines are made of wax. Americans love their candy. And so <laughs> we have we have shopping, mar shopping centers with entire aisles devoted to candy. Like I never thought about how ridiculous that is. Entire aisles, and it says candy over it. But they sell bags of red vines that are the that are no, the. No, they sell jugs. Oh, that's right. They sell big old plastic jugs of them. But you see, no, because I think the jugs are kind of a lie. No, they're not actually. They're packed pretty tight. Yeah, it's true. I wish I had one of those tubs. I only got one once. And I tried to make it last, but it was hard. <laughs> was that, did I get it for as a joke? One of you guys did. You thought it was funny. And I was like, I, I really tried to make it last. Because I, I love red vines I, so I'm much. I'm sure that Sadie was Oh my God, some. I wish I had some red vines right now. <laughs> wow. I'm sure she did steal some. But what are you going to do? It was a really long time ago. <laughs> some wounds don't heal. Uh, okay, from Spish. Job, J, K, one. Anyone know how to keep an original rotating ring from fading? I don't know anybody who has a solution to that. Um, in theory, if you had a, like, like a sun blocker, something that blocks UV. Um, alternatively, I once considered having some kind of externally or internally applied UV coating, not an anti-glare, literally just any UV, so you can protect the dye on my hands. Those are the only two things I know of. Oh, or you can just leave it in the talk drawer. Or you can always wear long sleeves. Yeah, but they have to be UV protected clothing. What? Ultraviolet can get through clothing? Why do you think they have UV protected clothing? Are you, are you sure you don't mean like the clothing itself is resistant to fading? I don't think so. No, because it says that, like some of them they say they have like fifty SPF. I don't know. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I do remember in the early '80s there was the thing in the Sunday paper, and it was about a new bathing suit that ladies could wear that they could tan normally through, and so it was a one-piece bathing suit, and so it looked like it was she it looked like it was a bathing suit, albeit kind of a thin one, like it had color patterns and stuff on it. But the actual, if you took away the colors, it was like cheesecloth. And so, yeah, I mean, these days, of course, it doesn't matter. Ladies in this town are perfect, perfectly legal, legal for ladies in this town to walk around topless. Mm -hmm. um, okay, how to buy a true poke um, from Peter PG whatever. Um, had mine since high school. Still, your true pogue still have owner's manual and sales receipt $88 it still works wow and you still got it um, I'd be interested to know what are the first two digits of the case back six digit serial number it's I, if it's a true pogue it's the first number is going to be one so or one or two they were made between um, Feb February 1971 to April 1972. So, first two digits, I'd love to know. Them. Oh, I didn't mean anything by this. I understand that's a rude gesture. I was just going like this to the, to the thing. 
I mean, it was insulting them. Hang on. I'm so sorry. I'm having to uh, tell Sadie something. Oh, okay. Well, you go ahead and do that. Okay. I am back. Okay, are we doing questions? All right. Seiko 6215-7000 per dose. Okay, is that's the video name. Okay. Uh, from James C. Garrett 6356. Lovely looking watch, especially once you replace the scratched up crystal. And we could see the dial and indices below. The work you did to restore the hands was amazing. I especially like the way you talk to your movements and tell them off when they don't play ball. It really makes me giggle. Keep up the good work and keep well. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. It's, it's he does it to everything. Well, because the problem is I have to keep reminding myself that things are not alive. Because uh, I talk to everything, and I think it's a bad habit. I don't know. Who I was, cares? I was a bachelor for a long time, and I didn't have to worry about... Are you... We've been married for almost 17 years, and you're still talking about being a bachelor. I really don't care. Well, no. I was just talking about my habit of me <laughs> talking to objects as though they were people, because, you know... I put it in my calendar. Oh, okay. I'm not going to forget this year. Good. Well, that's great. <laughs> um, in any case... What's the next question? Uh, Biff Cannon, BTTF. Spencer, why is the rest washer so important? Okay, well, you know, we're going to have to have a segment here. Because I could tell you about it, but might as well just, let's, I'll, I'll do my best to make a, a legible seg segment. Okay, so we are talking about the compound stems. And why... The stem rest washer is really super important. Okay, so this is that is a 6159 crown. Okay, hang on. Okay, why is a stem washer important? Well, I guess let's do the first thing. This is these are the components for a 6159 or 6215 in this case you've got your crown and this is this crown has an internal gasket just like the 6105s and just like the 6309s 7548s blah 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 so there's a complete stem the reason that you need this kind of a compound stem is that when you have a screw down, when you have something, effectively, if you have a screw down crown, you have to, this, the stem has to be all the way in, in the movement. <clears throat> <clears throat> so in order, you know, all other stems are just going to, they're going to be like this. This, this is a 6105. Okay, and so if you've got your 6105 crown out or in all the way, it just goes it just goes flat, and so it's it's set to where it bottoms out, and you're all set. That's as tight as it's going to be. But with a screw down crown, you've got to be able to compress it, which you can't do with this. So what they did, you can actually see the compression part here. You've got your, there's your female split stem. There's the male post in there. There's your spring and there's your crown. The stem washed washer should go right here, but in this one, it's actually missing. They sort of evolved the stem rest washers. This is the first iteration of them, the 6159s. So again, so you're going to need to compress this. Now, one of the problems they had in the 6159 is, well, actually they were building it off of what they had in the 6215. 6215 had a really weird setup where it would, um, they, they couldn't, they hadn't figured out stem release levers yet. So if you had a one piece case, you had to find a way to get the stem out or get the movement out without breaking anything. So Seiko came up with this nutty idea 
in the 6215s where this, darn it, this stack of material here stayed with the crown in the case here, and this little C-clip held the spring in place, leaving just enough room of that top slot to be able to drop in here like that. And if you didn't, you know, when you have to take the movement out, assuming, you know, pretend that this intersection is in the watch, you just lift up the whole movement and out it comes. Seiko got rid of that for the next series, 6159, and then 6309, 6306. So the reason though, they have this thing, stem wash, the rest washer was on the original one to keep the, the spring down to free up that tip. In the next ones, they realized that they had to fix a couple of problems. One, these early, early ones, notice they're flat on the bottom. Here, let me get us some proper split stem. Wait, I have a proper split stem. No, wait, I need a... A standard split stem. Ah, there it is. Okay. There. They did actually have that 6217, 6215 series for the 6159s right at the outset. Anyway, so this here. Don't mind the hair. Or I should say the fiber. So in the first case, this stem rest washer was here to clear out and hold a little bit of space for that. But they noticed also this with the, how can I explain this? There was a problem where if the, if the calendar inside the watch gummed up or something had gone wrong, so you were getting resistance from the inside and this intersection did not want to turn and you're on the outside twisting the crown, What's going to happen is one of the two of those things is going to snap off because this is brittle material. It's, it might stretch a bit, but chances are it'll break and then your stem is gone. So what Seiko decided to do, they're like, well, hey, we've already got one of these. They took it and they made it a complete circle. And the way that it works on the male posts over here is you have a split stem, like so, and you have your spring like so and then you have the stem rest washer sits on the top but it doesn't hold the spring in what the stem rest washer does instead is it snaps on here so these two little tabs are held within the fully circular uh, stem rest washer and it's prevented these are prevented from spreading out catastrophically and breaking. It makes it a much stronger structure. But it is interesting that stem rest washers um, changed their, their function within the same system. It's pretty cool. But any case, you can get away with not having one. I mean, this one has one, and I see a lot of these reworked ones where people, you know, the watch person wasn't able to keep that little teeny tiny ring there from going pink and going away. And they just assemble it back together. It works, but you know, it's not ideal. Okay, that's it. <laughs> okay, let's do that thing. Okay, yesterday's watch review today. Uh, oh wait, I guess I'll do that one. Because uh, uh, for some reason your formatting just I thought I did it the way you do it. <laughs> it's so messy, but thank no, you. No, I did it. Thank you. <sighs> All right, well, you have to show me the right way to do it. Uh, the 83468030 for Mr. James Duffy. One of my favorite Seikos is a rare 6660 that ran at 18,000 BPH and after service. It ran more precise than most of my other Seikos. My local watchmaker uh, said it was one of the most beautiful movements he has ever seen. Yeah, those are really beautiful. The, the, those watches are just, people don't appreciate them. There are, these, the, there are these jewels that are just out in the open and people just walk over them. What, are, what do you want? What? Yes, honey. Sorry. Um, <coughs> from Juan Reyes, 
Um, I have never seen underneath Loom before, and I love it. Isn't it cool? Uh, I'm kind of surprised Seiko didn't do more with it. Maybe it wasn't the fashion. Maybe it's because their Loom just died quickly, and it just wasn't a good idea. It does work. It works actually really, really well. It's compelling. Uh, and, it's a, and especially you look at it at night, and because the loom is little glow is coming from underneath and it's reflecting off the dial, it has this like, it has this like depth to it. It, it this real visual depth. It's 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 a pretty gripping thing for me anyway. And you see, especially you can see the seconds hand, but it's moving as a glow across the face. Um, it's they're just it's it's a really really neat 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 look, and I th I just think it's cool. Sorry, I feel bad that I'm that Sadie's cooking. Okay. Okay. Um, um, okay, underloom. Did you answer that? Yeah, I was just talking about the underloom. Ooh, I didn't tell you. Did you see what I, I... saw? So if I was going <laughs> to patent it, it would be under, so U-N-D-E-R, but then no space, L-U, umlaut, M. <laughs> under Um, Hans Molman, outstanding review... The loom you placed under the hands looks amazing. I Thank recently you. started getting into 1960s and 70s Seikos and Citizen. For a guy like me with a six inch wrist, it's poor logical paradise. Yeah, I tell you, I'm so, I'm so glad that more people are thinking about this stuff. I'm also super, super glad that the fashion for gigantic watches has dropped. Um, you know, to the point that I, I used to never wear below 40 millimeter anything, and now I wear 36 to maybe 38, maybe 39. Yeah, I remember when you first started wearing, um, when you, okay, so you had giant watches and then you'd put on like an Omega or something dressy and it looked so weird. It made your um, wrists look huge because I was so used to the giant yeah, watches. That was the thing. I'd look down and it would be like, you know, having this like, you know, sequin tape to my wrist. <laughs> But it's just a matter of perception. I have I have this baby on it. It's got this I'm big old tool watch thing. I, I'm really enjoying the older sort of more dress watchy things. And there's a lot of great things out there to find. Okay, and this is the last one. From the oh let's look at it. Unrestored one or Seiko 1819 Willard from Marcel Nordwick. Um, just found mine at an estate sale today. It's really been in a drawer for 35 years, first owner. Only a bit scratching on the crystal, but overall almost flawless. My biggest Seiko fantasy came today. That's wild. Yeah, that's wild, man. That's, that's great. It used to be that you could find stuff like that. That's getting hard to find. Um, what, I, when, what are the first two digits? I did it again. Someone's going to send me hate mail. What? I did the thing with the two fingers. People what, you're in, in, not supposed to do... Like this. It means F off in, uh, in, in Great Britain. What do I care what they think? We have to have cultural sensitivity. <laughs> also, also, it could be considered cultural appropriation. <laughs> Despite the huge number of, uh, you know, British ancestors, English ancestors we've got... And Scottish, well, and Irish, you know and Welsh. Ooh, I'm directly descended <laughs> from the the last king of South Wales, uh, and that person goes back a number of generations before that to the Roman general who is theorized to be the basis of the legend of King Arthur. So um, that's pretty cool. Uh, so being directly descended from you know King Arthur, but then if it is that gentleman, that gentleman was actually part of the Roman royal family. He took all of his Roman troops and left uh, in like 450, 460 AD when the Roman world was essentially in collapse and he never returned. And so the, everybody was like, he's going to come back and he's going to reestablish normal Roman rule again and we're going to have garbage collection and taxation and we're going to build roads and that's going to be cool and it never happened. So he went back, though. He was part of the Roman royal family. We can trace him to Constantine the Great, the first one. And then, you know, I haven't looked at his tree, but you start getting back at that point. I mean, 
that's more than 2,000 years yeah, ago. Yeah, but what, didn't I have like Charlemagne or something? Right, no, once that's the thing, is uh, once you get back that far, I also have Charlemagne, I know that, then all of a sudden you start getting, we just haven't found all the Well, we haven't been looking at it. But it's stupid. This many generations, even 500 years ago, there were thousands and thousands of ancestors. 2,000 years ago, everybody's everybody. You're either really... Someone that far back is either related to everybody today or nobody. Wow. Well, that's the theory. It might not be as short a time as 2,000 years, but it's it's a surprisingly short number of years. It really is. So the ancestry stuff, it doesn't mean anything. And we're all descended from the same people anyway. You get back far enough and it's all the same stuff. My I mean, most famous person... Well, no, well, there was the secretary to William Penn, and he, based on my research, was a mega dick. Um, and then I had some relative die in the Battle of Pinky, which was with uh, Mary, Queen of Scots, or whatever. And, and so that was his claim to fame. Uh, and then it looks like what happened is everybody was in Pennsylvania, and then this one guy fell in love with a chick from Tennessee whose eyes I got for some weird reason. Um, and then everybody ended up being in the, the, the South on my Nima's side. Where we're probably going to link up is we both have tons of ancestors that were involved with the Quakers um, and the, that new religious reformation movement in uh, England and Great Britain that, that you know gave rise to Cromwell, uh, who I'm distantly related to. His brother-in-law I'm done no wait yeah he's my ancestors wait Cromwell's brother or sister or something was married to one of my people some crap like that but anyway we just haven't found the connection but there's going to be somewhere in that area because we've got all that Quaker stuff we all came here starting with the early Quakers um and so we're going to find that connection uh, the, I think the coolest thing I have actually found so far, besides the King Arthur thing... The, the tapping's the dog. <laughs> um, is... Uh, Rocket, stop that. Uh, one of my ancestors was uh, was hanged at Gallows Hill. That's pretty cool. I bet he wouldn't have thought... That was like 400, 450 years ago. And I'm like, I bet he never thought, before he was hanged, uh, that 400-something on years from now, some minuscule descendant would be reading the man's name out loud. Mm -hmm. That's the thing with, you know, with people being so freaked out about things and stuff and being remembered and I'm looking at all of these people and I'm like, you know, a couple of generations go by. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm looking at direct ancestors and you go back, I mean, literally thousands and thousands and thousands of names and people I'm directly descended from and, and the names basically mean nothing. And so, you know, being remembered for a long time is just kind of meaningless. The only thing, I, I sincerely believe this, the window of time for people and for humans is you've got, when you're young, you've got your grandparents or your great-grandparents, then you've got, you know, your own parents plus your own kids, and then you're the grandparent. But though it's that moving line of life, that moving band of life that we need to be concerned with, I mean... Sure, everybody's talking about Cleopatra 2,000 years later, but, you know, what good is that doing her? None. <laughs> and now you got a taste of his brain. Yeah, well, because if we invest the most in terms of emotion and support with the people who are around us, and we treat them the best that we can and help them to be better people, there will be a, net, there will be a cumulative carry-on effect to the people around them. And so, you know, little changes on the individual level maybe can result in larger changes if you give it wide enough spread and enough time. I'm, I'm an optimist. I keep hoping that we're, we're getting to the point that things are going to be better. Mm -hmm. Ooh, AI. I have to look for burrito. Um. Well, I'm just going to say, remember I was talking about um, somehow digitizing all of my, my speech and everything from the videos oh, and my Jesus. manner. No, wait, hang on, but I got it. <laughs> so I was talking about this, and I'm like, oh, but it's pie in the sky. Nobody can do it. There is an Instagram influencer lady, uh, young lady, and she has created an AI of herself from her videos. And if you want, you can pay uh, for an AI version of her to be your girlfriend. 
hey, you know, man, <laughs> there's a niche. And right now, we're in the era, era of EA that is like, you know, AI. AI, sorry. EA. <laughs> EA. Well, no, because I'm thinking about computer games because I'm thinking about the first Tomb Raider and how it looked amazing then. And now it's like ridiculously crude. Mm -hmm. we're, in the, we're in the Tomb Raider part of AI. We don't even know what it's going to be able to do. I don't care right now. I, I could be the family's personal assistant for the next 20 generations. Okay. And so, wow, wouldn't that be crazy? <laughs> All right, folks, I don't have anything else. No, I need to go look for tortillas. Okay, well, Bye. you go look for tortillas. And uh, thank you, folks, for sitting through all of that. Um, I apologize, uh, but I can't give you back your time. But I thank you for spending it with us. Okay, bye-bye. See this nice old thing? That is really old uh, watchmaker's... Uh, slab of leather. I got it from that watchmaker's estate last winter. It was just hard as anything. But I did my trick, my same trick with this that I did for watch straps. Which is, I washed it, warm up with water, got most of the crap out of it, and then I slathered it in my Picard's shoe treatment and let it sit there until all the water dried away. And you work all the cards through before you leave it there and you get it back. And all of a sudden, it, if I had moved it before, it would have snapped. So, and now, look at that. It's probably from the 1800s. Anyway, isn't that neat? I think it's neat.